A typical provision in a union contract will define when an employee may be disciplined. The most common discipline language provides an employee can only be disciplined for cause or just cause. These terms have been established and developed over decades of public and private sector labor cases and arbitration awards. In this presentation, we'll take a look at the commonly held model for just cause discipline. Arbitrators who review just cause for discipline cases often, but not always, review a discipline decision by looking at certain basic elements. The seven tests of just cause discipline were most notably laid out in a case written by arbitrator Carol Dougherty called the Enterprise Wire Decision. Arbitrator Dougherty called it the common law definition of just cause. He indicated that a no answer to any one or more of the following questions normally signifies that just and proper cause did not exist. The more questions an agency can answer with yes, the stronger the justification for discipline and the more likely upheld if challenged. When the right to due process, known as just cause, has been bargained for, the process has been reduced to seven categories. Notice, reasonableness, investigation, fairness, proof, equal treatment, and penalty. Let's take a look at each. When considering notice and adequate warning, ask, was the employee given advance notice that the violation of the rule, regulation, or standard would result in disciplinary action? And is the rule, regulation, or standard that the employee should know? When considering reasonableness, ask, was the rule, regulation, or standard allegedly violated by the employee reasonable and job-related? When considering completeness of investigation, ask, did the employer, before administering discipline to the employee, investigate to determine whether the employee did in fact violate or disobey a rule or order of management? When considering the objectivity and fairness of an investigation, ask, was the employer's investigation conducted fairly and objectively? When considering proof of the infraction, ask, did the final decision maker obtain substantial evidence or proof the employee was guilty as charged? When considering the uniformity of application of the rules, ask, has discipline for violation of the rule, regulation, or standard been enforced equally without discrimination? Finally, when considering the penalty, ask, did the degree of discipline imposed logically follow from the nature of the offense committed? Or, more clearly, did the punishment fit the crime? The United States Constitution prohibits public employers from taking any action that deprives an individual of a protected property interest without first providing due process of the law. That means that public employees are afforded due process in employment-related decisions, including discipline. First, we need to understand property interest in employment. An employee has a property interest when a written or implied contract states that the employee has a property interest. Most commonly, this is found in a just cause discipline or due process clause of a labor agreement. Second, the employer's past practice gives the employee a property interest. That is, the employer has been giving its employees notice and hearing in past practice. And finally, there's a statute or regulation that gives the employee a property interest. A public employee with a property interest in employment is entitled to written notice of the charges and an opportunity to present their side of the story before disciplinary action is finalized. This is often referred to as a laudermill hearing after a U.S. Supreme Court case recognizing the property interests public employees have in continued employment. So that due process, at a minimum, requires the following. First, a notice of the charges against the employee in sufficient detail to enable the employee to respond. Second, an explanation of the pre-termination and appeals procedures with the timetable. Third, an indication of the consequences at stake for the employee. Fourth, a reasonable time for the employee to prepare a response. And finally, fifth, a forum for the employee to present his or her response to present their side of the story.